is Wellness Buds, and I'm your host, Ella Wingfield. This episode is inspired by the following quote. I embrace the label of bad feminist because I am human. I am messy. I'm not trying to be an example. I am not trying to be perfect. I am not trying to say I have all the answers. I am not trying to say I'm right. I am just trying. Trying to support what I believe in. Trying to do some good in this world. Trying to make some noise with my writing while also being myself. Roxanne Gay. So I am by myself in this episode as Laura is recovering from an infection that landed her in the hospital for a couple days. So I am wishing her lots of rest and ample recovery during this time. I know that she has been going through a lot with all of this going on. So I wanted to give her space to heal and just sleep. She needs to get some sleep. (laughs) She is fine. She'll be back next week. But yeah, just want to let you guys know why I am here by myself this week. But I also just, I didn't want to skip a week during this momentous month celebrating Women's History as well as National Nutrition Month. So I, going along with that quote, I am going to reflect a little bit on what feminism means to me. I know we have some journal prompts coming up that we will be talking about next week, kind of reflecting on what feminism means to us, but also more along the lines of what's the best part of being a woman today and who is our favorite historical woman. So we have some fun prompts like that coming up, but I did also just want to talk a little bit about feminism and, you know, since it's national or international Women's History Month, I I just think it's something that I've been reflecting upon and something that I just wanted to talk about a little bit. So at the most basic level, I think feminism is about equity within our systems between genders. But beyond that, for me, it's just been a lot of questioning of why things are the way that they are. Why was our system set up like this in the first place? To keep women down means the power stays with the patriarchy. To not give us a voice means status quo and continued control. Even when things are supposedly quote-unquote equal, and maybe they are the most equal that they've ever been, I still think, you know, it's definitely not, it's definitely not equal. There's a mentality that women are at least, at least a notch or two below men. And I think, and I'm not going to say all men, because obviously I don't think all men think this way, but I think lots of men consider women weaker or the weaker sex biologically. Maybe that's true. You know, our capacity to build muscle, you know, is not... I mean, it's unparalleled to the amount of testosterone that men naturally produce. But beyond that, we are powerful as fuck, yet we still are not taken as seriously. I think it's, I feel like I've read this sort of thing a lot of being like, you can't be sexy and serious, but like, why the fuck not? (laughs) You know, why aren't we taken as seriously even if we are aesthetically pleasing? Uh, The wage gap is still there. There's still not as much representation of women and minorities or a combination of both in positions of power. Can men, women, trans, intersex, or however one identifies, can we all ever actually be equal when our country was set up by men to benefit men? And I mean, this also obviously applies to different races. Can anyone in this country ever be equal racially when this country was set up and found like set up for and by cis white men beyond equity in this country and worldwide really feminism to me also means to uplift all women it, you know i feel like it's taking note of how things are not totally equitable but i think it's also not pitting ourselves against one another someone else's success is not your detriment Putting someone else down does not uplift you in any way. When I was way younger, I did not get that at all. It's like somewhere, somehow, our society taught us to put other women down and to critique other women. Why is this normalized? I am currently reading Women Don't Owe You Pretty by Florence Given 
highly recommend, by the way. And I feel like it's not only perfect timing with this month of celebrating women and women's history, but I think it's a perfect time for me to reflect on things that have been so engraved in me in our society that I haven't necessarily looked at in this light before. I've been enjoying it a lot, but it's also been making me question everything. She talks about this com- concept a little bit and how it's commonplace to hear or say things like, I'm not like other women or subtly putting other women down. But why? And what does that even mean? I'm not like other women. Like, what's so wrong with being a woman? What's so wrong with being like other women? Why is this something that has been a thing? Why has this been a saying? Women's experiences are not monolithic. We are all so unique and we have so many different experiences. Yet, we do also have the shared lived experience of navigating this world as a woman and dealing with oppression in one way or another, whether you think it's like ever present in your life or just like subtle ways that we are treated and how we are regarded. It's just that is something that we all have in common. But, you know, like I said, we are all just so different at the same time. Also, the word crazy being thrown around, a catch-all term for women who have emotions or just reacting to things like, oh, she's just crazy. I feel like even thinking about that, it makes me think of Parks and Rec, Aziz's character, Tom, says Mona Lisa, his girlfriend at the time of this episode, is crazy. And he's like looking to Anne to get Anne to help him like get out of that relationship. And Anne calls him out and she's like, you called me crazy too. So like, what's to say that she actually is crazy, even if some of her actions are a little bit wild in that show. But yeah, I just feel like that translates into everyday life because I feel like so many men call their exes crazy and then we just accept that instead of looking at the guy who is saying that and thinking maybe that's a red flag that he talks about someone he used to date like that and maybe that is also slightly changing that people are analyzing how men talk about women or their exes or whatever a little bit more But I feel like in the past, at least for me, if a guy had said that, I'd be like, oh, makes sense. Like, but why was I conditioned to think badly of other women and accept crazy as a reasonable explanation for whatever the case was, you know? I know I posted this on our Wellness Buds podcast Insta, but one of the quotes in Florence Given's book asks, how much of my femininity is who I truly am, and how much of it is a product of patriarchal brainwashing to exist for male consumption. So, not, like, ever since I read it, I, I like, went back to that, that quote and reread it. Reread it several times. How much of my femininity is who I truly am and how much of it is a product of patriarchal brainwashing to exist for male consumption. And I find myself continuing to come back to this question in my downtime or like before bed or just any time like there's a little bit of a lull in my brain, like I just find myself going back to this. And it seems embedded in my core, all the things that make me me, I consider myself to be pretty feminine when I feel like being that way anyway. But I also just feel like I just am. Like, I've never been a person who's questioned if I should be a woman. I'm like, yes, fuck yes, I should be a woman. I feel so feminine in so many ways. But how much of that is because I want to be that way or I want to be perceived as beautiful? I've been shaving my entire body, my arms, my legs, the whole dang thing since middle school, But why is it that body hair is associated with not being feminine? I'm not even a particularly hairy person, but when I was growing up, I considered any of the hair on my body to not be cute. I wanted to get rid of it, especially, I think, just taking in this media of hairless women. I wanted to be a woman, not a little girl with my little blonde arm hair and legs. I remember getting pubic hair and thinking that, oh yeah, I am a woman now. And then only to find out that that it's not feminine either to be having all of that done there. And I should be shaving all that off too. But why is being hairy considered less than? Why is that not the beauty standard? And I know that's also changing. Like a lot of women are letting their all natural selves be. 
But I feel like still like mainstream, it's not necessarily the beauty standard to be seeing like a bush full of arm hair on covers of magazines, like a woman in her bikini, you know, or like seeing a full blown bush down there. I decided to try to not shave my body as kind of like, as I was reflecting on this question, okay, I'm not going to shave anything. I lasted not even a whole week before I was already starting to feel just kind of like grossed out by it. And then I'm still in my head being like, why? Why am I conditioned to like myself and my body less if there is hair grown out just the tiniest bit? Why have I been conditioned my whole life to try to appease men and try to make myself as desirable as possible for the hope that one day some man would want me to be theirs? What parts of me are me just for, like, my own sake? And what parts are really just because it's more appealing to men and, like, I'm just conditioned to do all these things that I do? And I think this question just has me really shook because I'm just like, if gender norms did not exist, would I dress the way that I dress? Would I continue on with my self-care routines of lotioning and moisturizing my whole body? Would I have been so obsessed with how my body physically looked for a majority of my life? And I mean, I'm not going to say that I'm not concerned with how I currently look either, like, but it isn't like that point of obsession. But growing up, would I have cared like that my thighs are too big or that my stomach is too big or my boobs aren't big enough? Like, would I have been so obsessed if it wasn't for the media and appeasing men how would I do my hair would I still do my makeup to be honest I think I love doing my makeup but I'm like also questioning that like I love to feel pretty just for my own sake I like looking in the mirror and I and I like liking what I see I would like to believe I would still do that because I still do that even though I'm happily married and I'm not trying to impress anyone but if we weren't conditioned to think that Sometimes women look better with makeup. Would I still think that way? I know before COVID, when I didn't wear makeup to work, I would get comments saying how tired I looked. And that would drive me so crazy. People being like, are you okay? You don't look as well today. And it's just like, that's only reinforcing that I should probably be wearing foundation at the very least. I I think just because it's so hardwired, Now, obviously, I can't say in everyone, but I know it's hardwired in me. It's hard to know the real answer to this question. But now I'm just like, ever since it being posed to me, I just, I'm like, I'm just always going to be forever wondering. And I am really curious to see what anyone who is listening to this thinks about this question. Also very curious to what Laura thinks. I know we will pick up here next week she'll have something to say I know (laughs) I was like I want to say all these things in this episode but I also want to hear what she has to say so I'm gonna leave it at this how much of your femininity if you are a woman who's listening to this is truly who you are how much of it is a product of patriarchal brainwashing to exist for male consumption very curious to what our listeners think yeah you can let me know you can DM me on Instagram at Wellness Buds Podcast. You can also email me at wellnessbudspodcast at gmail.com. You could also just text me at 971-292-5565. You could also call and leave a voicemail. It's all anonymous. So yeah, let me know what you think about all of this. If anyone has anything to say, I am very interested. So yeah, I think we'll pick up on that next time. I think also we'll pick up on one of our prompts, which is who is one of your favorite female historical figures. I know I mentioned that, I think, earlier in this episode, but I do want to talk about that one before this female month is over. Product of the week. Pow! all by my lonesome, my pal. I know last week we had a scale with Rosa and we talked pretty in depth about that. Uh, This week is also going to be a scale, but a food scale. So for me lately, I have been going pretty hard on counting my macros and 
I care way more about my protein, to be honest. Like, I'm still looking at all my other macros, but my protein is where I'm very much so trying to keep track. And I find that the scale is just easier than having to physically measure with measuring cups. I feel like a scale is more accurate, too, to know exactly how many grams I'm getting of a particular food. It just makes it so much easier than measuring. I freaking hate measuring. So I'll put my bowl on the scale or whatever it is on the scale and zero it out and then put my beans or whatever and I could zero it out again and put on my sweet potatoes, zero it out. And, you know, then I can see exactly how much of each food, like when I'm making a bowl or even if, you know, I'm just having yogurt, like it's just so much easier to measure the amount and then have my accurate protein amounts. So that's my product this week is my little digital kitchen scale. So if anyone is interested in being more accurate with their macros or could find a benefit in that, or if you're like me and you hate measuring things, uh, perhaps this could be beneficial in your life. So yeah, I'll link it in our show notes. And as always, thank you so, 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 so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Laura appreciates it, even though she's not here today. Yeah, thank you so much. And if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, if you want to share anything about your wellness journey, if you want to share anything about journaling, if you want to share anything about anything, pretty much, (laughs) feel free to reach out to us. I know I mentioned it before the product of the week, but I'll say it again here too. You can DM us on socials. We're on Instagram at wellnessbudspodcast. You could also email us at wellnessbudspodcast at gmail.com. You can text or call our Wellness Buds line at 971-292-5565. If you like what you're hearing, please share with anyone who you think might enjoy this. If you could rate us on whatever platform you're listening on, that would also help us out so much, move us up in some ratings to get some more listeners. If you feel so compelled to leave us a review, that would be great too. Otherwise, just keep listening. We appreciate it so much. So we will catch you next week. See you then.